Hello again guys, Mark Gray here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm a professional landscape photographer from Australia. My work is collected in 32 countries around the world. And today I'm going to be talking to you about Fujiflex, the beautiful material that I print all of my prints on. A big thank you to everyone that has subscribed to my channel so far. Please be sure to hit subscribe below the video if you haven't done so already so you can keep updated with uh, any new videos that are brought out. I'm coming to you from Chrome Machine in Melbourne and these are the guys that uh, do all of my mounting of my work, have done so for over five years now and we're going to go through everything Fujiflex. So kick back, enjoy the show, and I hope you learn something new. So let's get started. One of the most common questions that we get asked in the gallery is, are there lights behind the prints? No, there's not. But there is very good reason why people ask that, and I'm going to explain why that is. So first of all, Fujiflex Crystal Archive, which is the full name of the material, has actually got a surface layer of crystals in it. It's a silver halide finish and the crystals actually pick up any light sources and they bounce the light off them, making them appear like they're backlit, uh, like they glow from behind and almost have a three-dimensional effect to them. It's quite incredible. It's hard to communicate through video, but certainly if you get the chance to pop into our gallery, you will see just how amazing it is. People always think that this must be new technology. It's not, surprisingly. It's been around since the 80s and it's been used in museums all over the world, particularly for its archival properties. It has on the box a rating of 80 years. Now that certainly is the case if you're keeping it in dark storage. However, once it's been exposed, the Wilhelm Institute in America has rated it with a print permanence of 40 odd years, okay? Obviously, when you put it in UV light, that is certainly gonna affect that, but that's why we use premium quality materials to ensure that we lock in the lifespan of the print. So before I sign and title the prints, even though the prints have been inspected thoroughly by the print lab, it always pays to do a final inspection. So both myself and Tom, who does our mounting, go over these prints, each one very carefully with a fine tooth comb, just to make sure that there's no printing flaws or anything wrong with the paper, such as scratches or dirty marks. Then it's time to sign. One of the challenges of printing on Fujiflex is the necessity to store it correctly in cool conditions. If not, or if it's old, the paper will tend to go off. And you'll be able to tell by seeing a yellowy tint in the white areas around the photos. In order to print on Fujiflex, you need to have a C-type printer, not an inkjet printer. So you'll find most photographers these days have moved to inkjet, and that's because it is a much cheaper process and it still offers good results. Inkjet is essentially spraying a variety of ink on top of the print. C-type printing uses lasers and chemicals to expose the photo inside the substrate. So it's not sitting on top and that's what makes Fujiflex 
looks so incredible with its surface properties of crystals picking up the lights and making it look like it's a three-dimensional scene like you can almost step into. It costs a lot more to produce a Fujiflex print, but in my opinion, it's definitely worth it. One of the other challenges of printing on Fujiflex is just how fragile it is. Quite often when they're printing on all the different paper types, they're coming out fine. But once they put Fujiflex in, they'll start to see scratches appearing on the print. It's a problem and it's difficult to diagnose for the print operator. Because it's such a delicate surface, any small hard particle inside the machine can create scratches that often run the whole length of the print. This can result in having to reprint the photo many times until it's perfect. We actually have a piece in the gallery right now, two and a half meters wide. It had to be reprinted seven times before we got the perfect print ready to be mounted. All of this needs to be factored in to the cost of Fujiflex prints. So we're here now with Tom from Chrome Machine, Australia's leading provider of acrylic face mounted prints. So Tom, let's talk about what's involved in mounting Fujiflex effectively. First thing I'd like to know is what type of environment do you need to work in? Are there any particular temperatures you need to be in? How do you keep dust away during the mounting process and keep everything so clean and tidy? Yeah, the rule has to be small as possible, so there's not a big chance of having extra dirt, extra dust floating around in the air. Of course, yeah. We, we also have installed an air dehumidifier, an air uh, purifier, Excellent. which keeps all this under control. Yep. The temperature needs to be controlled as well for, to avoid humidity. Yep. So we have a split system, air conditioner installed. Absolutely, and it must change over the course of the year. It must be difficult to ensure that in summer the temperature range is the same as when you're operating in winter, given that you're in the Melbourne climate. That's correct, because yeah. a couple of these machines they're 24 hours on, so it always stays in the same sort of area of temperature and humidity. Let's talk now a little about the materials that we use when mounting Fujiflex. Now acrylic is the first thing that I wanted to touch on because it is available in a wide range of qualities or purities and entry level acrylic while it does the job is not going to offer any archival protection in the long run. So what have we got here Tom? This is a 6mm thick Shinkolite premium acrylic, it's cast continuous in its production. Fantastic. So this here is the acrylic that we use for all of my limited and open edition prints. It is called Shinkalite, and Shinkalite is a premium grade of acrylic. So I understand it offers a protection against 98% of UV light, which locks in the archival life of the print that we talked about earlier. And it's also near colourless. Yeah, its optical clarity is superior to glass. So Tom, how do you attach the print to the acrylic? We use a double-sided optically clear mount film, which is applied onto the print directly. And then through this machine, which is a laminating roll here. machine, yep. it gets rolled into it and permanently attached to it. Fantastic. And I understand that that process is super delicate. If you get even a speck of dust in between the acrylic, uh, the adhesive and the print, then you'll get a problem with you. That's correct. The challenge of this work is that you get only one, one shot. So if there's some foreign particle in between, it's back to square one. We have to start Basically, we go right back to square one. We need to reprint the photo and sign it, title, inspector, etc., before it comes back to the mounting process. Again, adding a lot of cost to this process. And we probably say the hit rate at this point would be maybe one in 10 pieces that we do get a problem with that needs to be destroyed and started from scratch again. So once the print is mounted to the acrylic, tell me a bit about how you back it. Yeah, to protect it from the back and to avoid any light penetrating from the back, we attach a rigid substrate board. In this case, it's this black specially formulated PVC board, which will, again, with a double-sided adhesive film, will be rolled onto the back of the print, in this case the Fujiflex. And this is completely acid free, again to ensure that we protect the archival life of Fujiflex. So once we've attached the print to the acrylic and then backed it with the board, what's the final step in the process? The 
final step is attaching a hanging system. In this case, we're using a hidden aluminium subframe, such as this, which is very rigid and solid, preventing the piece from bowing. Fantastic. And Tom has just touched on a really important point. Uh, one of the mistakes we made early on when uh, fine-tuning this process was to not strengthen the back of the face-mounted piece enough so that when uh, acrylic does what it naturally tries to do, which is expand and contract as the humidity changes, it was bowing. Okay, and you see this quite often uh, out and about when you do see frameless acrylic pieces, they will start to bow off the wall. So that there we find to give a optimal protection against any potential bowing due to the expansion and contraction of the acrylic that happens naturally. All right, so you've seen all about Fujiflex and the delicate mounting materials that are used. We have here a finished piece that was done some five years ago, would you believe? It still looks like it's brand new. Let's have a look at this now, Tom. So there you go, this is a sample piece that we did when we were refining the process of face mounting the prints, getting things absolutely perfect. Tom, thank you very much for your time today. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you on board. Just to let everyone know, Tom does work for people right across Australia and internationally as well. You can check out his website at crowmachine.com.au or check out the link below and make sure that you get in touch with Tom and say hello because he's a lovely guy and he'll certainly take care of all your mounting needs. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you learned something new. Please be sure to hit subscribe so I can keep you updated with new videos as we go. Like and comment as well. I'd love to hear from you and I look forward to seeing you on the next video.